What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another video. Now, today we are actually going back to a video that I did a while ago. I actually cannot remember when it was, but we did a tier list of the Fast with Fight stories, and back then I had only or the only stories that had come out were up to uh, Gumdrop Angel, what we found. Um, and now, all of the books are out, including Felix the Shark. Uh, so we're gonna re-rank all of the stories because a lot has changed since then. I still have some hot takes, so be calm in the comments below, but you know, this, this, is, gonna be, this is gonna be fun because we're gonna decide on what stories are best, what I want for Tales from the Pizzaplex in the future, and what I don't really like about the Fast Fright series as much. Now, before we say anything, I just want to say that I think all of the stories are fantastic. All of the books are great. They're really well written. Uh, I'm so excited for new book series and everything. And really, none of them are bad stories, you know? They're all really good. They're well written, as I said. Um, some of them are just better than others though, and I really like what they are going for with some of the stories. So we're gonna start with Into the Pit. Um, oh god, I don't even know where to put this. Honestly, I wasn't really feeling it with Into the Pit. It's very nostalgic. It's a great nostalgic story. I will put it there. I like how they go back to Freddy Fazbear's in 1985. They see the murders. That's a really cool part of it. I'm gonna put it in B, uh, only because that's the middle tier. Uh, and so we can kind of do everything relative to Into the Pit. But, I mean, the concept was cool, uh, the time travelling was confusing, but in the end it became quite apparent that the ball pit was uh, necessary for the epilogues and stuff, so it was important in the end. To be beautiful. This one's either going in A or S. I think I'm going to put it in A. Uh, I think in the first the first time I did this, I think I might have put it in S, and the reason for that is because I just really love the concept of, you, you know, who thinks of that? Who thinks of this robot who is, like, doing surgery on this child at night, making her into a robot kid, uh, and then, like, turning into her, blah blah blah. You know what happens in the story. I think the concept is just really cool, it was really well executed. T to go in the S tier, I think it should have gone the extra mile. Um, Eleanor was a good villain overall for the first book fights as well, but I don't know, I wasn't completely feeling it, and we'll talk about that when we go to the S tier stories. Uh, Count the Ways, I think I'm going to put Count the Ways in A as well, but above To Be Beautiful, and the reason for that is I absolutely love this story, it's brilliant. The cliffhanger is okay, I mean, we do find out what happens eventually in the last epilogue, and that what, that's what kind of redeemed this story as well. But also, re going over it again, uh, there's a lot of details in the story that I really like, and they really put a lot of effort into writing this one, and it's just really cool. And I like how they shift between kind of perspectives, future in Funtime Freddy, and past uh, with the grandfather and the boyfriend, and blah blah blah. We're not going to be ranking the epilogues because I can't remember what happens in, in the specific epilogues, but uh, the epilogues, good story overall, I'd say. It's well-rounded. Okay, fetch. Oh god, this is harder than I thought it would be. I'm going to put fetch in front of Into the Pit in B. Uh, this one was good. Uh, Nice of little details in there. I really like the concept. I think the ending could have been done better. That's all I'll really say. Uh, I guess it was creepy. Uh, Fetch is a cool character. Uh, yeah, that's all I can really say about that. Lonely Freddy. Um, really both Lonely Freddy and Out of Stock. I wasn't particularly feeling it. Lonely Freddy had a cool concept and the ending lines as well of, you know, the Lonely Freddies all screaming in there, like, implies that all of them were captured in the Lonely Freddies, uh, they all have the same fate, and it will probably happen for years on. But I don't know if that was taken to its full potential. I feel like a lot of the story, the story leading up to that point was a little bit boring and forgettable, 
So I'm actually going to put Lonely Freddy in C. I know a lot of you are going to disagree with that. <laughs> so I'm sorry. A lot of you are going to disagree with a lot of what I say in this video. So if you have different opinions, just tell me in the comments. But don't be furious at me. I'm sorry. Out of stock. Okay. I did say it was a little bit boring, but I think I'm going to put it in B, but I think it's higher, I, mean, I think it's lower than Fetch. I, I think Out of Stock, again, was a really cool concept, and it's great that we saw a plush trap chaser, uh, but again, the ending is kind of where it fell off a little bit. I think it's cool that they found the method to, like, flash the flashlight at the plush trap chaser to stop it and stuff, and they stopped it on a train. I guess that's kind of cool. But, I don't know, I wasn't that satisfied with it. I think it's a mid-tier story. That's my opinion, though. 1.35am. Um, I'm sorry. I'm gonna put it in D. I... Where they were going with it, it was kind of cool. Uh, but, kind of, all of it was pointless, really, because in the end, we found out that it was all... Eleanor's doing, I think. So, it's kind of all pointless. The ending to the story didn't make sense that much to me. It, I guess it gave me chills, but like, it's not the best ending of the Phasma Frights book. So, you know, wasn't really feeling it with 1.35am, but it was still a cool concept, and maybe they could do more like that in the future. Room for one more. This is going in A or S. It's one of my favourite stories. I think it's going to go in S. I think Room for One More is a fantastic story. It's great all the way through. Uh, it really keeps you wondering what's happening and then you find out what happens and it, it, it gives you shivers. It's really, really cool. Love the concept. It's I, I can't believe how... How did they come up with these stories? Like. They must have sick minds, <laughs> the authors. Um, but this one was really cool. The uh, the characters, especially, I really loved. Stanley, I could kind of relate to. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I like that story. The New Kid. Oh, also, with Room for One More, that was the first audiobook I recorded, uh, which was kind of funny because it gave me a sore throat as I was reading it. <laughs> so... There, there's a parallel there. The New Kid. Uh, it's it's alright. In terms of lore, it's pretty big. And we don't know if it totally fits in with the whole Stitch, Stitch Wraith timeline. But we're kind of like, yeah it does because Andrew is featured in it. So, it's kind of weird. There's a little bit of twists and turns. I'm going to put it in B tier. Below Fetch, I think. I think that's a good place to put it. Again, I'm not really going to be able to describe most of what most of my decisions, but this is just where I'm putting it. Uh, hopefully, that's enough. Uh, let's step it up a little bit and to step closer. Uh, this one was cool. Uh, I an eye and an arm, uh, but that was pretty much it. That's that's pretty much all that happened in the story. The ending was kind of cool with like the surgery, and of course he was an organ donor, so they had to take him apart and stuff. That was cool, but the rest of it was just kind of like, I ironic, you know, like, the, oh no, there's an eye thing that happened. Oh no, there's an arm thing that happened. You know, I am not too sure. It was like a curse, but it was like, yeah, it it was a curse for the sake of it being a curse. I'm going to put it above Lonely Freddy in C. I think. Dance with me. Okay, here's one that's going to be very controversial. I really liked Dance with Me. Uh, a lot of people in the community hate Dance With Me, and I don't really know why. Why do people hate Dance With Me? I think it's a really good story. I like how Casey was kind of trying to restore her life, but also messing it up at the same time. Like, she was running away from her life. She was running away from her friends who all robbed things. And then she went and robbed stores and stuff like that. And this Ballora was coming closer and closer and increasing the pressure on her. And she just had to give the glasses back. Uh, and then when she did, it was a happy ending, but also kind of a twist ending because we don't know if the girl was kind of like hypnotized by Ballora or if she was just dancing. 
I think Dance With Me goes in A, below To Be Beautiful. I know that's gonna be very controversial, that's a very hot take, but I'm based. Okay, this is another one. <laughs> Uh, I didn't like coming home as much as a lot of the community did. Uh, I thought it was a very heartfelt story, it was touching, it was cute. It didn't make sense to me. Why, like, why does Susie leave when the tree goes out? Like, why do they have to find the plushie or whatever it was? It was just weird. I don't, I don't really like it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm gonna have to put coming home. Ah, oh, this is hard. I'm gonna put coming home in D as well. I'm really, really sorry. Uh, but that's the way it is. <laughs> it's at the bottom. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Uh, I'm... You've really chosen the, the wrong video to watch. <laughs> okay, next up we have Bunny Cool. Uh, this one was a cool concept. There was... See, it was basically just a normal, like, FNAF 4 night, I guess. Like, you're in the bedroom and then you're trying to fend things off until 6am. Uh, that was pretty cool. I liked Bob and his and his family. They had a nice kind of, uh, you, you know, they had cool, like, funny... I don't know how to explain it. They had good characters, I think. Uh, good character developments as well. And Bob really took a turn. Uh, when he realized that the bunny call was wrong, it was a wrong thing to do. But then there was a twist at the end, which I really, really liked. Uh, I think because of the twist, it actually goes up a whole other rank. I was gonna put it in C, but I think I'm gonna put it above into the pit. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a fair place to put it. It was it was a nice twist. It was all right. <laughs> it's not like the most memorable story, but it was all right. Okay, now we get to the one that everyone is going to kill me for, so let's just get straight through it. In the Flesh, I really liked. The reason I liked In the Flesh is because Matt was a horrible person. It made it so comedic, it made it so funny, and then it caught me off guard. The ending, it made me feel sick, and that's why I loved it. <laughs> I know that it making people feel sick is why some people don't like it as much, but the fact that it made me feel faint after reading it uh, means it goes in the A tier. All the way up below room for one more though in S. Uh, I think In the Flesh is a great story. Uh, even though it's like so far away from FNAF. It's just a good story uh, by itself. Speaking of good stories by itself, The Man in Room 1280. It's going straight in S. I'm going to put it below room for one more though. Um, there's, I think everybody loves The Man in Room 1280. If I put that anywhere below A, I think people would be mad at me. The Man in Room 1280 is fantastic as a story. Uh, it's, yeah, I, I just love it. It's, it's so cool to see and it's so big in terms of the lore. Um, so it has to go there. Blackbird. This one is also a little bit forgettable. Um, so I'm gonna put Blackbird I'm going to put Blackbird in C above Step Closer. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I want to do that. Blackbird uh, in C above Step Closer. Um, it was an okay story. It, it just kind of... I don't know. You, you read it and then you were like, what even happened? Like... <laughs> Nothing really happened, and then it turns out that both of them were bullies in the first place. So why did one bully get sad when the other one, when he found out that the other one was a bully? It was really, really weird. I, I, I liked it, but it just, it was like one step away from being a good story. Uh, I just think it could have gone many different ways, and it didn't. The Real Jake. You know where this one's going. It is going... Oh, okay, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. It's going in S between Room for One More and The Room 1280. One of my favorite stories. Fantastic, emotional all the way through. The ending was crazy. It, it, it really connects to the Stitch Race. There's just so much to say. Like the characters in this as well. Jake, oh my God, Jake has my entire heart. <laughs> uh, 
it was incredible. I just loved the story all the way through. Hide and seek. Uh, although this one is one of the most forgettable stories in my opinion. I always forget that this story exists. Even though that, that, it's forgettable. I think it's a really good story. Uh, hide and seek is just, Toby is like, you can understand Toby right until the end when he spikes himself like he could have left the game and that's kind of what what makes me go crazy at the ending like I don't know why they wrote it like that uh, which is why it's probably gonna be a low A but I think probably above dance with me yeah above dance with me just just there in A I think it's a good story and that means we are now halfway through the tier list. <laughs> so let's move on to the, the cliffs. Uh, I'm just going to say right now, all of the stories in the cliffs are a little bit eh. Uh, I also agree with that a little bit with Blackbird, of course. Oh no, actually, I've put one in S and one in A. So Blackbird was apparently okay for me. Whatever. Um, I think the cliffs is going in D. I mean... I think it's going D, but above... I, I think it's going high D. I think it's definitely low C, high D. Um, the reason for that is because... You, oh, there, there were good moments in it, I will say that. The dad, I forget his name, was it Robert? Or was that the kid's... The kid's name was like Timmy or something. I can't quite remember, I'm sorry. Um, but the cliffs, that was, that was okay. But, like, the dad was going up to the cliffs, and then he heard the screams of his child. It was, like, kind of a big coincidence. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. It's a, it's a weird story. It, I think it could have been a lot better, but obviously they don't want to touch on, too much on the subject of suicide. I thought it was a very mature story, uh, especially for this book series, where it doesn't really touch that much on those sorts of subjects but no I think it was I think it was okay but it's definitely not as good as a lot of the other stories in this series speaking of which the breaking wheel I didn't like it at first but I reread it and I think it's a brilliant concoction of gore <laughs> uh, it's crazy it's crazy how this story came into fruition I think Hmm, where am I putting the breaking wheel? I reckon B. I think B is a fair place to put the breaking wheel. I'm going to put it above the new kid. Above fetch. I'll put it high B. There you go. Um, and then he told me everything. This is this is just a weird story. Fazgu. Uh, sure, sure. I love Fazgu. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, as much as Fazgu is just literally this weird thing, like, okay, I'm gonna put Heat on me everything. I think low B. I think it's above Into the Pit. Above Bunny Cool. Above Out of Stock. Above the New Kid. I'll put it there. Okay, that's a lot higher than I thought I was gonna put it, but that's how I feel. Gumdrop Angel. This one was really good, actually. I really liked, especially, the one detail where the the boyfriend or the boy, like, yeah, the, the guy was, like, crying as Angel was going into the box at the end. Uh, it, it really signifies that he knew what was going to happen to her, and I really like that. So, where am I putting Gumdrop Angel? I reckon I'm going to put in a. I think all of the stories in Gum. I think Gumdrop Angel is a really strong book. I'm gonna put Gumdrop Angel in A. Um, I'd say above Dance with Me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Joe's Lucky Day. This is definitely an A. I reckon this is a better in the flesh. Or is it a worse in the flesh? I'm gonna say it's a worse in the flesh, just slightly. I reckon they're both kind of the same. Uh, Sojo's Lucky Day, just the fact that, um, you know, what was, what was the guy's name? Oh, Sergio, it's in the title. Sergio thought 
he was like making himself more beautiful, but uh, Lucky Boy was using illusion, illusion discs to make him look more beautiful, just like to be beautiful, fun fact. Um, so really I like, I like that concept, he was just chopping things off and then when he walks into the prom room or whatever it is, the school dance, uh, everyone screams at him and there's a trail of blood behind him. Love it. Fantastic. That is the way to do a FNAF story, uh, a gory story. Uh, and what we found, oh my gosh, this one is incredible. I love it so much. It's going to have to go in A as well. I'm going to say it's, I'm going to say it's below to be beautiful. So we have Sojo's Lucky Day, What We Found and Gumdrop Angel in the A tier. It's really cool. Okay, now we have the Puppet Carver. Hmm. The Puppet Carver. It has Fatsugu. It's a little weird because it is confusing, right? And the average reader wouldn't really pick up on what's happening. There's just like, the, he goes into the machine, dies. Or no, no, he doesn't die. He just comes out alive. Nothing happens to Jack. Uh, and then this weird goo comes by and like attacks him and then it disappears and then suddenly Jack's like Yay, I'm a good guy. So like it's really confusing at the start uh, But saying that I liked the Sylvester story the little puppet that was basically Pinocchio um, And I think it had a lot of potential But I'm gonna put it in C uh, Many because we don't have a lot of stories in C um is it better than Lonely Freddy? I would say... <laughs> no, I'm gonna put the Puppet Carver in C, bottom C. Jumper Tickets. Love this story. It's definitely a big kind of like twist and the ending was really original and really good. So Jumper Tickets, I'm gonna put in B, above Into the Pits. Uh, above Bunny Cool, above Out of Stock, above the New Kid, um, above He Told Me Everything. I'm gonna put it there. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Pizza Kit. This is also one of those stories where it's how gore is done right, almost. Uh, because all of the gore bits was like hallucinogenic. It was like all a dream and stuff, which I really like, but it's kind of like psychological horror. Uh, it, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I think it could have been a lot better and I wish there was more of, of the gore that was in like real life uh, rather than just all of it in the head. But saying that Peyton and Marley, gosh, it was a weird, oh, and the twist with Marley at the end coming back it was all a prank. It was so weird. So I think I'm gonna put it in B, uh, but I think I'm gonna put it really high B because the gory bits were really gory and it also made me feel sick, just like In The Flesh. I just think that In The Flesh was better. Do I? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Actually, Pizza Kit was better than Dance With Me and Gum Dropping. You know what? I am going to put it up one. Uh, what we found better than To Be Beautiful, I think. Yeah, the gory bits were better than To Be Beautiful. You know what? I'm gonna put it high A. <laughs> I really like the pizza kit. I, I really like pizza kit. It's a good story. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm sorry that I'm having so many hot takes in this video and I'm having so many revelations as well, which is great for me. Friendly face. Do I like Friendly Face? Not really. Kind of. It kind of made sense, but it kind of just didn't. There's some cool details in it as well. It's like very sciencey story. I'm gonna put this one in B. Definitely. I'm gonna put it, oh, not there. I'm gonna put it one over, there we go. Below the breaking wheel, I, th I think that's fair. Uh, but in B is, is cool. Sea bonnies. This is a really cool idea for a story. I really like it. Was it executed right? The entire story up to the sea bonnies bit was amazing. Oh, not the sea bonnies bit, but when um, what's the guy's name? 
it wasn't Joel, was it? It that's in that's in uh, Kids at Play. I think Kids at Play was Joel. I don't know who the guy. I don't know what the guy was called in Sea Bonnies. I forget. But he turned into the Sea Bonnies at the end. Until that point, I was really, really up with the story. It had a great lead up. I think the ending actually disappointed me a little bit. Um, although it was a really cool concept that it started raining and then, you know, the sea bonnies would be free and like getting p other people as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think I'm gonna put sea bonnies in B as well or A. I'm gonna put it in A. I'm gonna put it below Gumdrop Angel. Was that a smart decision? I hope that's a smart decision. I don't know if I'm completely accurate on that. I think a lot of this is like my first opinion, like going into this f straight away. It's all subject to change. Uh, in fact, I might change some of these around at the end. Uh, Together Forever, pretty good story. Uh, it was funny uh, to say the least. Uh, I think it's above Sea Bonnies actually. I think I'm gonna put it Ah, this is difficult. Above, it's not above what we found, definitely not. I think I'm gonna put it above hide and seek. I think that's fair, yeah. Uh, the characters were pretty good in that one. Fine player two, this isn't in order, but fine player two, the last story in Prankster. Straight an S, brilliant story. I know a lot of people didn't like this because it wasn't an MCI story. Who cares? <laughs> Who honestly cares if it's an MCI story or not? What other information are we going to get from it if it is an MCI story? It's fantastic. It's so good uh, all the way through. It really keeps you on your toes. And the ending, the re big reveal that after all this time, she's just been sat in this little kind of closed off cubicle in a closed pizzeria in the back of like a diner, a new diner or whatever. She's just been sat there, she's now a skeleton, and the fact that they explain, like, the rules of the of the game and stuff, so that when the, the person that we follow, I forget their names again, the person we follow goes into the room and then she sees, and then that happens to her, it's like, it's perfect! <laughs> it's so good, so it's going straight in S. Oh, this is where it's hard, this is where it's hard. Is it above the man in room 1280? I would say yes. Is it above the real Jake? Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting it there. Room for one more is taking the lead so far, uh, but that could change. Prankster. Prankster, 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 prankster. Prankster. Didn't like it because it was too confusing. Genuinely, I'm so sorry about this. It's going in D. Uh, didn't understand it. Still don't really understand it. Uh, it was kind of cool that we got Jeremy on the cake. Uh, the gory bits were kind of funny, I guess. The relationships w were kind of cool. Uh, I really liked the characters, but that's pretty much all I liked about it. Uh, I think it, it kind of just tried too hard. I think it needs to be more simplistic and more explanatory, because I didn't really understand the ending at all. Uh, so I'm, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, kids at Play. Uh, this is the one with the uh, the Kids at Play sign. Uh, one of the weirdest stories in the series. I'm putting it in B because I wasn't really feeling it that much. Uh, oh gosh, where do I put it? I'd say I, I put it above Jump for Tickets but below Fetch. Yeah, okay. And then we have the last three stories, which are the Felix the Shark stories. Felix the Shark was really good up until the point where Dirk was just searching around for clues for about half an hour. <laughs> uh, really, it was really dragged out, is what I'm trying to say. It could have been a shorter story and a better story in that manner. So I think it's definitely A, but I don't think it's that high. Um, I think it probably 
I th oh my gosh, this is difficult. I think above Gumdrop Angel. Yeah, that's... No, Gumdrop Angel has a good finale. I'd say above Sea Bonnies. Um, so I think that's good. I just really like the ending of that story, honestly. Uh, and that, it was a good setup as well, and it was a cool mystery, but it just dragged out a little, a little bit. Uh, otherwise, it would have been higher. Uh, the scoop. A lot of people don't like this story either because it was too kind of like brain twisting and like fourth wall breaking. It literally broke the fourth wall like 50 times over. So I I wasn't too fond of the story, but it was still kind of cool. And the ending was nice and sweet and emotional and I quite liked it. So I liked it, but I didn't like it is what I'm saying. I'm going to put it in B. Where am I going to put it in B? Uh, above Bunny Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that. And we have the final story, which is You're the Band. It's going somewhere in the S tier. You're the Band is amazing. It's so good. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm. I think all of this is kind of okay. As I said, there weren't too many bad stories in the series. Uh, a lot of A tiers and a lot of B tiers. Uh, again, I think this is also kind of subject to change, but I don't really care that much. The S tier, though. What is the best story in my opinion? Room for One More was just fantastic. The concept, the execution, amazing. Fine Player Two. The concept of that as well, and the ending, amazing. I actually think Fine Player 2 is above Room for One More. I th I think so. You're the band. It just hit everything. It's so good. You're the band is above Fine Player 2. The real Jake was just, oh, emotional as heck. You know what? The real Jake is gonna have to go above Room for One More. And The Man in Room 1280 is just a classic. I'm keeping it there. There you go. There is my tier list. It's it's not very, it's not that cool, but that's my tier list. Uh, I hope that you agree with some of these. Uh, tell me what you would change about my tier list. Obviously, there are a lot of places where everything, everybody would change. But, but this is my hot take. So um, thank you for joining and listening to my hot takes. Uh, I will see you out now. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. But I've been Ozone and I have to go Zone. I'll see you later. Goodbye.